Wow, Christmas na Christmas na talaga tayo, hindi po ba? Uh, sumayaw pa po kayo at uh, tayo po ay umawit. So I'd like to welcome everybody and thank you for joining our virtual praise and worship tonight. And you're really going to enjoy the time we spent together this evening. And it is a great honor to be with you tonight. So thank you for all the guests, watch parties, families, viewers all around the world, especially those from UK, Spain, Switzerland, Ireland, UAE, who sacrificed their time at this hour to listen, to be here with us, and to hear the word of God. And I'd like to greet all the Lord's Flock family in the Philippines and all over the world. At lahat-lahat kayo, maligayang Pasko. Naku, malapit na talaga. And let us prepare ourselves to worship the Lord because great is the Lord and worthy to be praised. But before that, brothers and sisters, may I request everybody to please bring out your Bible with your pen and of course notebook and share, share, share and create a watch party para mas maraming makakapakinig sa salita ng Diyos. Okay? So invite your friends now as we will worship together. So tonight, join the song ministry headed by Bea Maclee to lead us in our praise and worship. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, brothers and sisters. Are you ready to praise and worship our God? Amen. Let's all sing this. Me over again. Because of you, my heart is alive. My heart is alive. You got me dancing on the inside. Your love has won me over again. Because of you, my heart is alive. My heart is alive. You got me dancing on the inside. Your love has won me over again. Because of you, my heart is alive. My heart is al
Father, we're so overwhelmed by your great love. As I said in 1 John, perfect love casts fear. And whatever we are facing right now, oh God, fear, shame, doubt, it is cast away because of your great love. We entrust ourselves to you, O oh God. And we are here as your children, declaring of that greatness. So let's all declare this.
begun into the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so thank you, Bea, and the Psalm Ministry. That was a wonderful praise and worship, isn't it? Okay, so I'd like to again request everybody to please share to your friends, families, and also create your own watch party, comment where you are. So let's prepare ourselves and let's thank God for gathering all of you and you with us this weekend as we worship through music and dive into the Word of God. So brothers and sisters, let us um, turn our Bible, of course, in Mark 7, 31 to 37, but I'd like to read just the first, first part. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went to Sidon, down to the city of Galilee and into the region of Decapolis. And there are some people that brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk, and they begged him, to place his hand on the man. So first, we were all born hard of hearing, okay? Totopo yan, we were born hard of hearing. So the word says that they brought to Jesus someone who could not hear and who could not even speak, who hardly speak. And it sounds like he was born deaf, hindi po ba? Talagang pinanganak na siyang bingi. So that his speech, of course, was affected by his hearing, hearing loss. And of course, he never learned to pronounce the right words correctly because he could never hear what they sounded like. So to an ordinary physician, such a case or such a hearing loss is incurable. But we know that nothing is impossible to Jesus or nothing is impossible for Jesus. But there is another kind of hearing loss or deafness, if you will, spiritual deafness that we want to talk about this evening. And it is worse than the nameless, the nameless man in our, uh, in our text experience, okay? This is called spiritual deafness, okay? Mga kapatid, marami sa atin, ay merong ganitong kapansanan with which every one of us was born. Because in 1 Corinthians 2.14, maliwanag po doon, that the man without the Spirit of God does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Yan, okay? So, it's not our ears that gives us trouble, but our hearts, which do not want to listen. And po, okay? Now, how does this deafness of our old Adam nature, tawagin natin old Adam nature, because our old nature ay talagang tayong lahat as uh, Romans uh, 7, there is really nothing good with our old nature. Now, because we were all slaves of sin. So, um, how does this deafness of our old nature or old Adam shows itself? Well, it's our old Adam that says, I don't like to hear this. Okay? After one service, a member took the preacher aside and said, Father, I don't think you should preach so much about our material possessions. You know, we work hard all night long. We work hard to buy the things we want. And people are going to stay away from your church, from this community. If you keep reminding them about this, that's hard of hearing. So marami pong ganyan. But if today you hear his voice, brothers and sisters, harden not your heart. Um, there was a new preacher na inassign ng kanyang uh, elder na mag-preach. So ang una-una niyang sinabak na preaching is about smoking. That smoking destroys the temple of the Holy Spirit, the body, which is in 1 Corinthians 3.16. Um, tinawag kagad siya ng kanyang elder at sabi ng elder sa kanya, you know, you don't preach smoking here, okay? 
da, da, na hindi dapat nag-smoke. Alam mo naman, baka may mga masasaktan. Mawala pa yung mga tao sa atin. Well, next week, he preached again. Sabi niya, but this time, he preached about gambling. Naku, gano'n na naman. Pinatawag na naman siya. Sabi ng paso sa kanya, no? elder sa kanya, I told you, mga sensitive yung mga bagay na yan, stop preaching that kind of teaching or topic. So the following week, he, he again preached about drinking. Naku, ayan. Sabi nung elder sa kanya, nung pastor niya, okay, young man, matigas din ang ulo mo, no, I told you, na wag kang, wag kang nagtuturo naman ganyan. Kasi katulad niyan, alam mo naman na umiinom pa kami. Marami pa sa atin na nag smoke marami pa rin. May mga members tayo, may leaders tayo na gagambo. Kaya nga, kinakailangan medyo um, wag kang masyadong mag-teach ng ganyan. Kasi nakakabing yan. Alam niyo, sabi po nung young preacher, well, sabi niya, sir, Uh, sir, I, or brother, or pastor, or elder, mahirap naman po yung pinagagawa niyo sa akin. But uh, basta to, sabi niya, this is the last time, okay? Next week, okay, there is someone, a very important person that is coming, okay? Siya ang hari. Tapos kaya mag-ingat ka, kasi baka mamaya masampulan mo na naman yung Hari, at masaktan sa maririnig niya. Kaya dahan-dahan ka sa iyong pagsasalita. Sabi niya, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, pastor. I'm sorry, elder. Sir, but I have to speak the truth because the king of kings is always here to listen. Siya ang nagsasalita sa atin. My brothers and sisters, This is just an example na may mga tao ayaw pakinggan ang tamang aral. If you are a disobedient person, if you are a disobedient son and daughter, I believe you don't like the sermon about obeying your parents. Kasi tatamaan ka, hindi ba? If you're committing adultery, nakikiapid ka ngayon. You don't like to hear the six commandments And what it says about adultery. If you're cheating the Lord in your tithes and offerings, bingi ka kapag nakakarinig ka ng mga sermon on Christian giving. Nabibwisit ka pag itong pinag-uusapan kasi madamot ka, di ba, kapatid? Okay, our old Adam likes to practice selective listening. Para bang you're just going to the grocery and then you choose what items that you would like to buy. And then you're so selective, soliciting, and hearing only what, what you want to hear. But this is not how the Bible and how the Lord speaks. In 2 Timothy 3.16, the word of God is to reprove us upang malaman natin ang ating mga kasalanan, to correct us, ituwid tayo sa tamang, sa tamang pamamaraan na tamang ugali, to teach you para tayo maturuan and to guide you para tayo gabayan. So, you hear some children now, mostly the new generation, say that the Holy Mass is boring. To think Jesus' word is boring is a terrible sin, hindi po ba? So if my ears are full of the old, old Adam earwax, And I don't like to listen. And I don't think I have to listen. And I don't even want to listen. Then what benefits will I get from the word of God? What benefits are you getting from the Wednesday God series here? The teaching tonight in our praise and worship. The good news is that we have a Savior who can open our ears and make us hear his words clearly. Maraming impediments ang hearing. Una, business. We must be very careful that we don't miss what is important. Not spending enough time with the Lord. Kasi busy tayo. Paano natin maririnig? Pa, paano natin makikilala ang Panginoon, kapatid? That we are busy spending time with God. 
We have to be careful that we do not, uh, we, we are not too busy to hear the voice of God. In 1 Samuel 3.10, sabi, sabi ni Samuel, when you hear God calls you, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. In Revelation 3.22, it says there, whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the church, to us. And in Psalms 95, 6 to 7, if you hear his words, harden not your heart. Pangalawa, prejudice tayo eh. Minsan, um, unfavorable yung feelings natin sa isang tao or prejudice tayo doon sa paksa. Kasi ayaw natin. But you see, my brothers and sisters, kung naririnig mo ang salita at ayaw mong pakinggan, because ikaw'y tumatanggi, no, your prejudice, um, it's a feeling formed beforehand, unfavorable feelings, then you don't want to listen, hindi po ba? Number three is bias, o pagtanggi natin. Tumatanggi tayong tanggapin kung ano napapakinggan natin. Misa nakikinig tayo, pero pag hindi na natin nagugustuhan yung part ng tinuturo ng preacher, sinasara na natin ang ating mga tenga. Ang apat, wala kang oras, no time. I've been too busy to take time for God. Yun po ba? The Lord expects us to listen to Him and respond, even in our busyness. The Lord, when we pray, it is a dialogue with you and Him. You need to talk to Him and He talks to you. Pero ayaw natin mapakinggan sa Kanya. Ang kanyang salita, especially pag tayo ay tinuturuan, pag tayo nire-reproof, sinasabi sa atin ang ating mga kamalian, hindi po ba? Our story takes place in a predominantly uh, Gentile area around the Sea of Galilee. And when I follow in the steps of Jesus' ministry, it never ceases to me to be amazed. Amazed talaga kay Jesus. How far Jesus would go and how hard he would walk, work to save a few souls for the kingdom of God. Minsan, mga kapatid, hindi po ba? Marami din mga nag evangelize sa atin, pero ayaw natin makinig. Hindi po ba? One time, we were opening um, a, a chapter in UAE, and there was this piece na, na nakiusap kami na kung pwede kami makipag-meeting sa kanya. Oh my God, that was past years, no? Alam nyo, hindi pa namin, kauupo-upo pa lang namin, sinabihan na kami, okay, I am not available, I am only available for 10 minutes with you. That's it. Ang kaso yung 10 minutes niya, siya dumaldal ng dumaldal, nakikinig lang kami. But we were praying. And after that, you know, the Lord just moved. At yung 10 minutes niya, sabi, na para sa amin at hindi na siya makikinig. Mga kapatid, nabaligtad, almost that, mga one and a half hour yata, magkausap kami at tinanggap niya ang Lord's flock. Pwede ng Panginoon. Panglima, nisa na yun natin pakinggan. Dahil disinterested tayo sa topic, disinterested tayo sa tao. Alam niyo mga kapatid, uh, yun ang isang, isang bagay eh. Nagbibingi-bingihan tayo kasi ayaw lang. Hindi tayo interesado. Then ang number six, hindi po ba? Kung hindi ka nakikinig at may nakikipag-usap sa iyo, hindi po ba rudeness yun? Kabastusan po yun, di ba? Sa Tagalog. Offensly, offensively impolite. Ill-mannered. Na men, merong kausap tayo, pinabarabara mo. Wala kang, parang hindi mo siya pinapakinggan. Ano ang gagawin natin? Halimbawa, ginaganyan tayo. Hindi po ba masakit yun? And then, number seven, masyado tayong in a hurry. O sige, sige, sige. Ano sasabihin mo? Kakat na natin. O sige, yun, ano-ano talaga. Sa punto na, diretsin mo. Yung dulo na, yung dulo na. Huwag mo na nga. Uh, kasi yung dami-dami kong gagawin. Okay? And here we. So, ayun. Kaya yung tao na, na pinadala sa atin ng Panginoon, gusto sana ng Lord na tayo pakipag-usap sa, sa tao yun. Kasi tayo yung bibig ng Lord. Eh. In kaso nga, paano ka gagamitin ng Panginoon? Palagi kang nag... Palagi kang may oras. 
palagi mong pag kami kumakausap sa iyo nagmamadali ka at talaga naman very obvious pa na ayaw mong makipag-usap o sige ano pa ano, kasi busy you know number eight lazy tamad natin no alam niyo araw-araw pag nagdadasal ako sabi ko Lord padala niyo po ako ng mga taong gusto niyong magminister ako padala mo po sapagkat Lord kami po naman ay kasangkapan mo Sino yung gusto nyong kausapin namin? Sino yung gusto mo yung ma-meet namin? Saan places mo kami nilalagay? Nawa, Panginoon, no? magampan na namin ang pagiging ikaw sa amin, brothers and sisters. E papadala sa atin, pero may pinapatawag sa atin ang Holy Spirit. O may tumawag sa atin. Ang tabad-tabad natin. Naku, matutulog pa ako. Sige na, mamaya na lang, sister, ha? Number nine, nag interrupt tayo pag... Pagka medyo humabahaba na yung sinasabi sa atin, may nagpapakounsel sa atin, nag-i-interrupt tayo. No? Para humigsi na, nababagot tayo. And number, of course, the next is disrespect. It's a, it's a form na nire, hindi natin nirerespeto at binibigyan ng paggalang yung tao. Siyempre, dapat i-honor din natin. You know? Then, hard heart. Napakatigas ng puso natin. Yan ang problema. Sa tigas ng puso natin, ang dami na sinasabi ng Lord sa atin, ang dami na natin napapakinggan, pero lagi na lang. Yes, paulit-ulit mo naririnig, pero kapatid, ang tigas ng puso mo, ang tigas ng puso natin, pusong bato, mga kapatid. Parang plain stone. Na talagang ayaw pumasok ang salita ng Diyos, kahit na ilang beses, ilang taon na tayo nakikinig, hindi pa rin natin ma masunod ang sinasabi ng Panginoon. Ang number 12, yun nga, di pagsunod. Parang si Jonah, narinig na niya ang sinabi ng Panginoon. Narinig na niya ang sinabi na, 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 sa kanya na pumunta siya sa Nineve, hindi niya pinakinggan. Talaga, he, he purposely disobeyed, deliberately disobeyed the Lord's word and command. And then number 13, sarado ang puso natin. Kaya nga sa Revelation 3, di ba, kung makakatok ang Diyos sa puso natin. Kasi hindi natin, pag hindi natin binuksan ang ating mga, ang ating tehinga mga kapatid, no, sinasara natin. Alam niyo, minsan sa gabi, pagka, limbawa, gusto mo na matulog, tapos ang lakas naman, ng, ano, ang lakas ng, ng TV ni, ni Tatay Bobby, ganyan, ang gagawin ko naman, ako, para akong, gusto kong lagyan at sara talaga yung tehinga ko kasi gusto ko na, matulog. Ganon din naman, ako naman yung gusto manood, tapos tatay naman gusto naman matulog. Kaya, kumari lang lagyan talaga, maglagay kami talaga ng, ha, ng ano rito para hindi namin marinig. Pero minsan, nahihirap eh. No? Meron pong ganon, talagang sarado tenga nila. Ano man ang gawin mo, hindi papasok. At meron naman nakikinig, papasok dito, lalabas din doon. Kaya wala rin po. 14, pretending not to hear. Yan, nagbibingi-bingihan. Oh, di ba? Uh, parang wala ka sinabi. Ah, may sinabi ka ba? Pero narinig niya yun. Mga kapatid, hindi ba? Ilang beses na nangangaral si Sor, ilang beses ako nagtuturo, ilang beses na naririnig ninyo. Ang dami niyong napapakinggan. Pero bakit ganon? Parang wala kayong narinig, mga kapatid. Parang wala tayong naririnig. E may tenga naman tayo. Baka may depresya. Number 15, o paano ka makakapakinig sa Word of God? No? Naalala ko tuloy pag kami, meron tayong seminar, may praise and worship tayo, growth, ang dami. Ang sarap matulog doon sa heritage kasi ang lamig at saka yung mga upuan, talagang theaters, theater seats. Ako, ayan. Imbis, paano ka makaka, makakarinig, kapatid, natutulog ka? Sige nga. Paano? Napapanaginip ko na napapanaginip ko si Stratechi. Ah, ganun talaga. <laughs> oh, so, sleeping. Sa Ephesians 5 verse 14, Wake up! Hoy gising! Sabi doon, Wake up, sleeper! Ngayon, nanonood tayo. Maaga pa. Sana hindi nyo tinutulugan ito ha. Acts 20 verses 7 to 9, Si Eutychus, ah, haba lang talk ni, ano, ni Paul. Magdamag, magdamag talaga siya until midnight kasi paalis na siya. Next day, he was going already on a mission. So, talaga naman hanggang midnight na niya ginawa yan. Minsan talaga sa mission, lalo na sa Spain, sa UK, lalo na talaga sa Mallorca, 
hanggang madaling araw kasi alas 8 kami nag-uumpisa doon at pumapasok pa sila. Hangga alas 3, minsan madaling araw, no? Talaga makikita mo na gumah. Para na kaming ano, mga manok na tumutuka-tuka eh. Pero kailangan namin makinig, ano? So, ito si Yuti Tikos, alam nyo, alam na sa third floor. At habang nagsasalita si St. Paul, siya naman ay he was sinking in deep sleep. As Paul talked and talked and talked on and on. And he fell on the ground from the third floor and he was picked up dead. O, hindi ko naman kayo tinatakot, ha? Kasi binuhay din naman ito ni St. Paul. Number 16, guilt feelings. Ano? Minsan tayo natin marinig kasi may guilt tayo eh. May ginagawa tayo eh. Ginagawa natin yung sinasabi ng tao. Ginagawa natin yung sinasabi ng speaker eh. Minsan may nagka-counsel sa'yo. May guilt feelings ka kaya ayaw mo na magpa-counsel. Ayaw mo makinig. Number 7, you refuse correction. And Proverbs 12 verse 1, ang sabi ng Panginoon, pag hindi ka nagpapatuwid, stupido ka. Sabi ng Panginoon, you're stupid. Because it's a man who will not or he will re, who will re, refuse to be corrected. So, minsan ayaw natin makinig. May sinasabi ang mami, may sinasabi ang daddy, may sinasabi ang ating ate, may sinasabi ang boss mo, may sinasabi ang elders. You refuse correction. No? Then, number 18, an important person. Minsan, ah, namimili tayo ng kausap eh. Pagka, pag meron tayong pakinabang, kakausapin mo. Pag gusto mong kausapin, kakausapin mo. Medyo importanteng tao, kakausapin mo. Pero yung hindi importante, ma- eh, hindi mo kakausapin. Hindi mahalaga yung tao, insignificant. Brothers and sisters, si Lord, mga kapatid, nagpapadala at tayo dapat makinig. Bilang kristyano, makinig tayo. Mayaman o hindi, pantay-pantay. Yung oras natin, alam nyo mga kapatid, misan, ang dami ko rin gagawin. But, you know, every day, I have to do what the Lord is leading me. When people call up, people text me, sa dasal ko sa umaga, padala niya eh. So talagang, I will, I will make time for them, brothers and sisters. At marami meron, meron pong nag, nagpapakamatay sana. Nung, na, nung nakausap ko po siya, nabuksan ang kanyang kalooban. Marami po yung ganun. Nawawala ng pag-asa. Kanina, siyempre, no? Siyempre, ang hirap naman. Yung isang member namin, si Milang, kabamatay lang ang father niya yesterday ng COVID. Tapos ang nanay naman ngayon, ni Ross, tatlong kapatid niya, may COVID. Ang hirap nun, no? But I have to call her, to comfort her. I would spend time listening to her. I called up a brother na namatay din ng asawa sa UAE. No? Talagang, Uh, ang uh, matagal yon medyo siyempre mahal na yung ano tel- telephone bills ko no no but i don't care because god wants us to listen minsan yung pride na bata ko makikinig sa kanya eh mas magaling ako sa kanya alam ko ha alam ko dapat kong gawin i i refuse to listen ayun minsan masyadong mayabang yung ating ang ating isip that's why we don't want to listen especially when When you look at the person who is just what? Mas intelligent ka. Mas, mas, mas uh, believe ka sa sarili mo. And number 20, stubbornness. Matigas talaga ulo. And number 21, you disregard intentionally. Ha? Di mo talaga papansinin. I-ignore mo talaga. Tinatawag ka parang, parang kang hindi naka, parang hindi mo sila nakita. Parang hindi mo sila narinig. But the Lord, di ba, every time somebody calls, His ears are ready. His ear is always hearing. Kaya nga sa Isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2, sabi niya, My hands are not too short to reach out and save you, and my ear not deaf not to listen to you. But, sabi niya, hindi naman ako makikinig if you regard iniquities in your hearts. There you are. So, hindi bingi ang Panginoong, pero tayo, hindi ba, nagbibingi-bingi yan tayo. And then, minsan nakaka-annoy. Nakakainis. Minsan, siyempre, nire-repeat na nire-repeat sa atin pagpapaalala. Medyo na ano na tayo. Nadidisturb tayo sa mga repeated attacks. Di ba? So, yun, annoying. And then, number 23, nadidisturb ka dahil nagagambala ka. At bad ba? Kasi, kasi tumawag-tawag naman ito. Eh, ang dami-dami kong gagawin. Gagambala tuloy ako. You know, my brothers and sisters, si Lord, dito ko siya nakita eh. Pagod na pagod na siya, dami-dami niyang gagawin. Pero 
he would find time. He would spend time with someone. So let us go to Roman number two. Only the Savior can open our ears to hear. When Jesus came to the region, his fame as a miracle worker has already spread. Kasi ang dami na niyang pinagaling eh, before this, no? There is this unnamed man who was deaf and could hardly speak. And the Greek language is very descriptive do sa, sa speech problem ng taong ito. And it says his tongue was tied up with a string. You know, sabi doon, tied up with a string. Today, we talk about something like tongue-tied. Yun. Yung bang, this speech impediment could have been shattering or perhaps it was difficult difficult for him to pronounce words since he was deaf. And this man could not hear anything, and when he tried to talk, no one could understand his speech. So one who does not have a relationship with God, and Anito, does not hear the instructions and the warnings that the Lord would share with them. Back at 1 Corinthians 2.14, the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit. It, it, for them, it is foolishness. Kaya nga po, pag wala pa tayong personal na relasyon sa Panginoon, ay hindi, mahihirapan tayo makinig, mga kapatid. Now, Roman number three, the best thing you can do for a hurting friend, a hurting family member is to bring him or her to Jesus. On verse 32, some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly hear at all. So, nakaka-interest ako talaga dito. It's interesting, this man didn't seek, okay, hindi niya hinanap ang Panginoon, he didn't seek out Jesus himself. The Bible says some people, mga kaibigan niya, brought him to Jesus. At ako, marami salamat. Katulad din ng four, four friends of the paralytic, di ba? Na talagang binabari nila at dinala nila ang, ang kay, kaibigan nila para pagalingin ng Panginoon. They even bore the roof, no? Para makababa yung friend niya. You know, um, this might have been family members or friends, I don't know. But their compassion, yung kanilang awa, habag sa kanilang kaibigan na nagsasuffer at ang kanilang pag, pag, uh, paniniwala that Jesus will make a difference because... Um, siya po ay na, na, nagiging bantog na na miracle worker. Katulad din ni Brother Arnold na bulag talaga siya from birth. Alam niyo hanggang ngayon, si Brother Arnold, doon pang member pa natin, mga 90s pa sa Lord's Block, may isa pang member tayo noon na bulag din. Haba ah, talaga naman halos araw-araw na doon niya sa Ditwason. Umulan, bumagyo, minsan nahulog pa sila sa manhole pero ganun katiyaga siya bulag no so ibig sabihin may kapansanan pero nung marinig niya ang salita ng Diyos mga kapatid hanggang ngayon no kahit ganyan ang kapansanan niya nagsiserve pa rin siya kay Lord Roman number 4 the tactfulness and sign language of Jesus so verse 33 sabi doon he took him aside away from the crowd there are many miracles Jesus performed publicly, but I love this fact that the Lord did not wish for the man to feel like a spectacle. No, and dami kasi tao. So he took him, he takes him aside to minister to him privately and personally. So to mabisila nila yun yan sa crowd, mga kapatid. In doing so, he shows all of us that whatever he was doing beforehand, could be put on hold. Kung ano man ang ginagawa niya, marami pa siyang gagawin, pero nung makita niya, ang taong ito na nangangailangan ng tulong, he put on hold everything na gagawin niya. Sana ganun din tayo. When somebody's calling for help, ano ba yung ginagawa mo? Pwede naman isang tabi mo eh. Ay, hindi eh. Parang hindi ko naman narinig. Kunyari, hindi ko siya narinig. But you see, the Lord uses us to listen to the calls of His people. For He was focusing on his, this important and urgent need. God will be gladly, it's always gladly, to make your case a high priority. High priority ka ng Panginoon, kapatid. So, ang una, nakita ko dito, Jesus wants, uh, wants our attention. 
No, the Lord wants our eyes upon him. Jesus has to take this man aside because he's getting him to where he can he can have a close personal relationship with him. Silang dalawa lang. And this I can testify. There's something when I met the Lord some sa, sa personal na kaugnayan ko sa kanya. Nagsimula ito March 22, 1980, 40 years now, no? Magpo 41 years na sa March. There is something electrifying about my meeting Jesus personally. Oh, if our friends, all of them, okay, the suffering ones, the sick ones, the sinful ones, the self-sufficient ones, all the men could just meet Jesus. Jesus, okay, he would arrest the damages in their lives and heal them as he did to me, mga kapatid. And I thank God for my mom who brought me to Jesus and I met Jesus and he made my eyes to see, my ears that were, that were deaf to hear the word, to hear his call. And my mouth he opened to announce and declare for glory to his name. Let us find out the healing of Jesus. So Jesus put his finger into the man's ears, okay? Then he spit, okay? And then touch, okay? Yung ganyan spittle, and then nilagay sa tongue. Uh, parang ano yata yun, di ba? Kadiri to death. Well, listen, listen, bago tayo mandiri. Okay. He sticks his finger in his ears, okay? To indicate that, okay, they are going to pray for his hearing. Then he spits uh, on his finger, on his finger, and touched the man's tongue to let him know that God wants to help him speak with understanding. The spittle is a byproduct, brothers and sisters, of the mouth of our Lord Jesus Christ, the mouth of the Lord, from whence comes from the word of God. So, ang nakita rin natin dito, he sigh. Okay, nagbuntong hininga siya. He looked, okay, up to heaven and with a deep sigh, okay, the dictionary defines sigh like this, to take in, okay, to take in and let out a long, deep, audible breath, okay, especially expressing sorrow, fatigue, longing, etc. Ay, natapos din. Ay, natapos din ako sa trabaho. Ay, okay na. Ganun, di ba? So, and it must have been loud to, to be heard by the Lord, the, the crowd. Sabi niya, Efata, Efata, open up. He spoke a word in Aramaic. He looked up the heaven and with a deep sigh, he said, Efata, open or be opened. At this, this man, okay, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. Suddenly, this man could hear Jesus, brothers and sisters. He could hear the wind. He could hear the birds singing for the first time. He, you know, the, the strings binding his tongue was open, and he began to speak plainly for the first time. And he could hear his own voice. Naalala ko tuloy, mga kapatid, I was also deaf. I was also, you know, ako day dumb. Natatakot ako magsalita. Pero alam nyo, nung tinats ng Lord ang aking pandinig, narinig ko ang salita ng Diyos. Pumasok ito sa aking puso. Ngayon, mga kapatid, hindi po pwedeng mapigil ang salita ng Diyos sa aking bibig. Why? It is just like fire sa Jeremiah 20. Nandito yung fire sa loob ng aking puso that I cannot contain the fire. I have to speak. I have to proclaim. I have to teach, brothers and sisters. And they were astonished. They began zealously proclaiming. He has done all things well. He even makes a de this deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Unstoppable testimony. 
Jesus changed them to tell no, charged them, don't tell anyone. This was a practical request kasi alam nyo, nagumpisa pa lamang siya ng father's business ni. Baka mami, alam nyo na, marami na namang mga mag-accuse sa kanya at hindi pa dapat. But, but with a miracle like that, how could anybody not tell their friends and family what they had seen? Have you seen a miracle? Well, if you don't want, you have not seen a miracle, look at yourself. Lahat ng mga binago ng Panginoon, milagro po tayo lahat. Kasi hindi po talaga mapapalitan ng puso natin, matigas to eh. Pero pinalambutan Diyos ang puso natin, pinalitan ng Diyos ang puso natin, kaya kapatid, magsalita ka. Pakinggan mo sinasabi ng Panginoon. We don't have to hold it back today. Now the Lord wants you to tell everyone what Jesus has done for all of us. What words would you use to sum up all that Christ has done for you? Today, this man couldn't call on the Lord to hear the word of the Lord. But he needed help. Because people without Jesus need helps to do to 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 what to bring them to Jesus. Merong kabang kaibigan kapatid or family members who need Jesus. They need your help. They need your help because they are spiritual disabled. Nang nung araw mga kapatid bulag din po ako in Second Corinthians four verse four. The God of this age, the devil, has blinded the minds of unbelievers. That is why they cannot see the light of the gospel. Hindi natin nakikita ang liwanag ng magandang balita ng Diyos sapagkat binulag tayo ng kalaban natin. And you may be thinking, brothers and sisters, well, Jesus has ascended into heaven and is now at the right hand of God. So how can I bring my friends and family members to Jesus? Mga kapatid, Jesus is the reigning as king. But I am glad if somebody asked me this. When you bring them to church, you're bringing them to the body of Christ where the word of God is proclaimed. Katulad ngayon, maraming bingi, mga kapatid. Maraming bulag. Nakatulad din natin noon, tayo bulag, tayo bingit, hindi tayo nakakakita. Hindi tayo nakapagsasalita tayo yung mga lumpo, paralytic, paralyzed, sin sick. But then, we met the Lord. And He made us what? He made us to see. He made us to hear. He made us to speak and proclaim. To witness. And to bring more souls back to Him. My brothers and sisters, The word has, has to be proclaimed. Maraming hindi nakakarinig ngayon, mga kapatid. Dali natin upang mapakinggan nila ang mga salita ng Diyos. You know, my brothers and sisters, kahit nandun ngayon ang Panginoon, still He has given us a commission and this is to make disciples of many nations and teach them all my commands so that they will obey, baptizing them And then I will be with you until the end of times. For 16 years, we have a television ministry, Science and Wonders. And for 15 years, our radio, Science and Wonders, and Tandat Himala before. At Radio Veritas and DZ, uh, I forgot well. Okay. We do some advertising in the community, of course. But every study, okay, but every study we have ever done reveals that 80% of the new people, oh, yung mga bago, um, who come to the Lord's block come because a friend or a family member invites them and bring them there. That's the greatest thing you can do for anyone, brothers and sisters, bring them to Jesus. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus came to save, to save the world. And He's seeking these people at tayo nakakilala na, tayo na-redeem na ng Panginoon. This is our business. 
This is still our usual business that we are supposed to witness. We are supposed to bring the deaf and the blind, the paralytic back to Jesus. Friends, can you imagine this reaction? Today, there are roughly 360 million people on the planet who suffer from hearing loss. That's about 5% of the world's population. Only 10% of those who access, okay, to hearing aids and medical science. I can imagine this poor man express amazement and tears no nakilala niya ang Panginoon. Na-imagine ko nung makilala ko ang Panginoon at kinalagan niya ako sa pagkagapos ko. Nang makilala ko ang Panginoon, mga kapatid, ibang klaseng experience. Tears fell down my eye, from my eyes in gratitude. Tears of gratitude to Jesus. Jesus can, Jesus can and will open our ears too right now. These ears that by nature says, I don't like to hear what Jesus says. And I don't need to hear what Jesus says. I don't want to hear what Jesus says. And, and what he uses is his very word, which we study our growth series every Wednesday, Bible study, uh, in formation programs, this Friday evening, may praise and worship, simic mic, may praise and worship in the sanctuary, in the sanctuaries of our homes. And John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, the 7.8 billions of us, he gave his son. My brothers and sisters, I'd like to exhort all of you. He came to die for sinners. And if you have been the only sinner, makinig kayo, he would have died for you kahit nag-iisa ka na lang. And Jesus doesn't have doesn't save groups of people together. He saves people or person. He saves each person individually. He wants to take you aside from the crowd today na napakagulo ng daigdig, mga kapatid. Hindi ba na may mess ang ating buhay? Ang dami na attract na sa atin. Ang dami natin attractions. Ang dami natin concerns. And the Lord wants to set you aside and, and talk to you and speak to you and touch you, brothers and sisters. Open your ears so you can hear Him. Open your mouth so you can make His name famous. We're not our hearts burning within us while he talked to us. These were, the, these were the words in Luke 24, 32, those are, are road of Damas, uh, Damascus. Friends, if something inside you is telling that this sermon is boring or that you don't need to hear these same truths again and again, if you're in a hurry in your prayer or attending your small group or Bible class isn't worth your effort, Still, those voices, brothers and sisters, are the voice of God. Come listen to the Savior and speak to you. You will not be disappointed, brothers and sisters. He will tell you about himself, and you will know him in a personal way. He will show you his promises of life and forgiveness, and you will believe. He will tell you the mysterious things unknown to you na pag nagdasal ka raw, Sasabihin na sa'yo mga misteryosong bagay na hindi mo pa nakikita. And in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 10, ang sabi doon, what your eye has not seen, what your ears has not heard, what the human heart has not conceived, the Lord will prepare you to see this for those who love Him. These are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. And you will not be bored kapag nakilala mo talaga si Lord. So tonight, brothers and sisters, I have a very personal testimony to tell you. I am testifying because I am a miracle work of God. I'm testifying because I was healed by God. I was desensitized with evil, but then I was so deaf and mute. I don't want to talk to people, especially pag hindi ko katype, hindi ako interesado. Mga importante lang gusto kausap. Yung magbibigay sa akin ng bisi, magbibigay sa akin ng pera. Pero ngayon, mga kapatid, iniba ng Diyos ang buhay ko. I have time for people. I will spend time with people, especially ang mga taong pinadadala ng Diyos sa buhay ko. 
May time ako para makinig sa kanila. May time ako para makipag-usap sa kanila. May time ako upang ialok ang aking kamay. May time ako para pumunta ako saan ang gusto ng Diyos papuntayan ako. Mga kapatid, buksan mo ang iyong buhay. Buksan mo ang iyong puso, kapatid, sa Diyos. Kailangan ka niya. There are many friends, families perhaps, na kailangan makapakinig sa Panginoon. Dito po, virtual ngayon. Why don't you invite your friends? Lord's Black family, why don't you? For Christmas, Jesus has come to your life. Why don't you bring people back to God? Na makilala nila ang Panginoon. Save them. Maybe you have friends, families, sisters, co-workers, your classmates, bring them to Christ. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Marami po ang salamat sa pagdating mo sa buhay namin, Panginoon. Nagpapasalamat ako, Panginoon, sapagkat Napakinggan na naman nila ang iyong mga tinig at salita mula sa bibig ko. Ikaw ang nagsalita sa kanila. Panginoon, I trust that Lord, these people who have heard you, whose ears are Lord not listening, touch their ears now. Put your fingers on their ears right now. At kalagan mo, Panginoon, ang lahat ng mga spiritual waxes, impediments sa kanila mga tenga upang mapakinggan nila ang salita mong buhay. Ang salita mong nagbibigay ng sigla, nagbibigay ng buhay, and especially your word of God, that when our sufferings are acute, your words, Lord, restore us back. Lord, touch these people right now. I pray for them as we begin. Open their ears. Never let, let them be bored by learning of you. Never let me or let never let them think that they know enough already, Lord. Remove their pride. Never let them ignore even one little things in your word. Because, Lord, that they think they know better. Open their ears, O oh Lord, to listen to the cries of the people, O oh Lord, that they hear. The cries of the people because you always hear. When Bartimaeus called you, Lord, you were not deaf. You responded. When the lepers asked for healing, you touched them. Lord, when the woman, Lord, fetching water, you listened to her even, Lord. You were hungry and thirsty. Lord, you, you stopped, Lord, what you were doing, teaching When this woman caught in adultery, Lord, was pushed by this man and they were going to, to, to really put, him, put her to death by stoning her, you stop and listen. Lord, you speak your words. By nature, Lord, we are hard of hearing and hard of understanding. But these very words of the Bible open our ears to hear, our minds to understand our hearts to believe. And tonight, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you heal all of us. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wow, may I invite everybody to join the Lord's flock especially. Meron po kami mga small group meetings twice a month. We have the e-life, virtual. We have the small groups. We have the praise and worship, of course. Saturday, 10 o'clock dito sa umaga, sa Manila. Saturday naman doon sa America. And of course, our growth series. And marami pa po after work. So please, stay. And I'd like to greet my only daughter, Mick, Mick who's celebrating her birthday. Happy birthday, Mick, Mick. She's, um, hindi ko na sasabihin ng pangalan. Anyway, <laughs> sa Monday, uh, Mick, I love you and happy, happy birthday. So please stay. God bless you all and thank you.
Thank you.